So g'day fellow bang note collectors and in today's video on Guma D coins and bang notes we have these four bank notes which we're just going to go through and discover if any of these uh, have any value to them. So the first one is a Canadian bank note from 1937 to 1954. So this was issued during the entire reign of George VI and there are ever denominations up to $1,000. The first thing you'll notice, it's got English and French. It doesn't have any indigenous languages on there, which is a bit sad. And also, it has a date on uh, 2nd of Jan, 1937. So it's a frozen date, but these were not all printed in 1937 and then just issued over the next 14 years. Uh, they just would have been printed even in probably 1954 so they changed these over 1954 because uh, well he passed away so they always change the banknote designs when the monarch passes away not always at once so obviously king george v died in 1936 so it took him a year to actually design these banknotes and this is a general issue so you go to Numister, you look it up. This one is, you can see as DG, GFT. What does that mean? Well, you've got the signatures up here. So what we have is the Gordon and the Tower signatures on this back note. It seems to be the most common one. Uh, so there are printing figures here. Just remember, these are printed, not minted. You mint coins you print banknotes and here it says 460 million and it's got the sequence of prefixes so the prefixes are the two letters on the actual uh, serial with the serial number behind it it does have values here but those are subjective and they fluctuate with the market so this is probably an average of people's past buying powers. And just remember, inflation does, over time, increase the value of what you're going to pay for these. So in the future, these will look pretty low. Uh, but then, you know, you need to take inflation into the value. So over a long period of time, you might lose money with uh, the purchasing power of your current currency. So on the back, what we have is... Portrait, nah, so it's supposed to be an allegorical figure, so no one specifically, and it's agriculture. So we have food, fruits on the ground, and she's holding a rake, and some other implements of agriculture sitting on the chair, thinking, yeah, I'm eating a bit. And also, it's printed by a banknote company. So the value of this banknote currently is probably between 10 and $20. Uh, in Australia, these are not too common, but in Canada, they're probably the most common where you'd actually get the realistic rate of uh, this banknote. So the banknote itself would have circulated to uh, probably the late 50s, and by the 60s it would have probably been out of circulation, being replaced by another issue. So that's actually quite a nice banknote. I don't mind Canadian banknotes. And another thing is that this series... George the Six was not on every banknote. On other banknotes, they did have other people, and it's the only country in the British Commonwealth that issued banknotes with different members of the royal family, as well as some uh, prime ministers of Canada. And they done it up until 1954 when they changed all the banknotes just to have Queen Elizabeth the Second. So that's very interesting if you're interested in that type of topic. Okay, the next one we have is a Brazilian banknote, and this is a 1942. You know it's 1942, it's got five cruzeiros. So this is the new currency to come in in 1942. And in 1943, they did issue proper banknotes without the milli raise currency. So this just says 5,000 raise, so the currency was raised. And... Even when banknotes become common, uh, this was a pretty low-valued banknote in the first place. Uh, 
they did issue coins up to like two, three hundred in the eighteen hundreds, and then they decided to issue one thousand and two thousand uh, rays later on. And it has a portrait of, gee, I don't even know who this guy is. But all up, this series was first issued in 1924 up until 1942 when they issued the new series in Cruzeiro. And it has a portrait of Jose Maria de Silva. Yeah, I'm not even going to say his whole name. God, does he really want to have... How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, five. God, that's a long name. Uh, 1819 to 1880. Okay, so I think he was a former president. And these banknotes, they have, you can see what's left of the signature. So this is in ink. It wouldn't have been in ballpoint pen these come out after this no, during the second world war uh, it would have been in a, a fountain pen so that type of ink does fade very readily uh, and well this one does have the number of banknotes looks like it's about 30 million but the signature series of these ones uh, is quite extensive and you probably they're probably not all catalogued and so you probably are not able to uh, get the whole series because some of them would be small some of them would be great uh, someone would have actually spent all day just signing these banknotes very tiresome that's why they print their banknotes these days and on the back oh look at that that looks quite nice so that is uh, sepia. So I have no idea who in calligraphy. Okay, a panel figure child between two seated women, allegorical figures of industry and commerce. So look at the kid looks like it's having fun, pretty much. So. Yeah, this bank now you can get for probably ten to twenty dollars. This one's not in that great a condition. I'd say probably fine. Uh, along with that bank note, fine condition, pretty poor. So if you really wanted to get one, uh, this is a space filler for your actual bank note collection. Uh, you probably try and aim to get a, a higher grade bank note, but if there are none on the market and this one's a good price, then uh, why not just go for it? The next one we have is a Thai Wombat from 1955, and this was the last issue of the Wombat banknote issued. Uh, in 1960, they did issue a coin. There is a great variety of signatures, and I won't go into them there. Um, most of them are pretty small, but I think this is uh, Signature 40, which is probably the greatest issue. Obviously, this is T, 408,000. So, obviously, you've got 408 million, should I say, of the T series. Uh, so, there's probably quite a few billion of these banknotes, three or four billion printed. Uh, because it's just a low value banknote in the first place. Uh, this one is in good condition. Actually, it's uncirculated or almost uncirculated. I haven't actually seen the quality of the actual bank note and the reflection of the lights just because it's in a plastic cover and this is quite hard which makes it very good probably doesn't have the acids that will eat the bank note and the value of this one yeah I'd say probably probably at least twenty dollars although I could be mistaken but this one is going to replace the banknote I, I do have, which is a lower grade banknote. And the last one we have, so this is why I purchased all these. I just wanted to get this one. And this is a $30 to $40 banknote. It is a Bahamas and it's a commemorative to commemorate uh, the first landfall in 1492. So it celebrates something 500 years ago. 
And we have the Venetian, Venetian Christopher Columbus, which is obviously in his English name. Don't, can't remember what his uh, Venetian name was. Here we have a sand dollar. So it's like a it's like a sea urchin, but it's flat. And you can find them on Australian beaches and beaches all around the world. So this is a B series. And I've seen them go up to H, so I think there's like five or six million of these banknotes printed. But being the commemorative, uh, they're a lot harder to get. And this year, actually no, last year in December, the East Caribbean issued a commemorative two dollar banknote, so you should look that up. Here with the flag of the Bahamas. And we have I can't remember if that's the coat of arms. We have a lot of features that represent the beach. So we have uh, gastropods, which are snails. We have uh, brachiopods. Uh, not brachiopods, bivalves. They're two different members of the animal kingdom. And on the back, what we have is yeah, an actual map of the, the archipelago itself. So there's a coral atolls. You can tell they're coral. Or just the way they're formed, and the more than likely, well, I haven't. Ah, here's the coat of arms. I haven't actually visited the um, geology, but I'll surmise that a lot of this is volcanic in origin, so probably basalt and San Salvador. And here we have the Amazon. Uh, so looks like we have flamingos. We have the Cyclo Riley, so it looks like this is the scientific names. We have a type of parrot, so and the, that's a dragon, so more primitive type of lizard. And that's quite a nice banknote. And the watermark, I don't see any watermark on this. Ah, oh, well, anyway, so this is probably the most expensive banknote of the lot, and also the nicest. I'm quite happy with that. So if you wanted to get one of these, uh, if you find one for under $20, yeah, I would actually buy it because that seems to be a good value considering they sell for about $30 or $40 each. Anyway, I hope this helps you with your banknote collecting. Just remember it's not, uh, it's not investment advice. It's uh, just advice on uh, good banknotes to actually collect if you're a collector of the hobby. Anyway, thank you very much, and just remember, oh look, I do have a website, now I'm not too sure if I should keep these as US coins, I think I'll just take another photo of mixed coins around the world, and uh, probably put one on top, you know, that actually looks quite good, uh, that would attract people, anyway, thank you and Goodbye.